Welcome back. This is now Vectors and Coordinate Systems. We're going to start by talking about Cartesian versus Polar Coordinates. This is the most common types that we're going to deal with in this class. We've got r theta, x, y. These are two different ways we can describe vectors. Typically when we talk about a vector we'll have some sort of arrow like this. It'll have a length and which would be the magnitude and a direction which is going to be the angle. And if you think about it that way, really, the typical way we talk about vectors is by using polar coordinates. Um, polar coordinates aren't easy to add or subtract, so we often convert them into Cartesian coordinates. This is called resolving a vector into its components. So in this case, there's two different ways to represent this sort of displacement. It would be either that it's this angle, this distance r, or you can move in the x direction and in the y direction uh, separately. And that would still get you the same displacement because remember displacement is just from one point to another. Now hopefully you remember how to do these sorts of conversions uh, but just real quick we can look at those. It's, it has to do with Sokotoa. I figure you mostly remember how these work uh, but symbolically it's easy to remember that you know, sine theta is going to be equal to the opposite over the the sorry opposite over the hypotenuse, and then you can reconfigure this however you want to want to to say that the hypotenuse in this case, which is r, and the opposite side is y. So you can rewrite it this way: if you solve for y, you get uh, r sine theta. If you wanted to solve for r when you had y, you would do uh, y over sine theta. So these are ways that you can go through to make these conversions. Hopefully you remember how to do that. Moving on. Next up we'll see what you can do with the vectors. You can add them, subtract them, however you'd like. We've got graphical methods for that. We've also got mathematical methods doing it uh, by breaking it down into components. So this is the graphical method. We've got vector a, vector b. We can add them up a plus b by doing tip to tail a plus b. Our resultant vector, that's a word that you want to make sure you remember and can use uh, readily is this vector starting here, ending there. So there we go. This would be how you would do it graphically. It's, it's basically a waste of time to do it that way, but conceptually you need to understand how to do it. Uh, next up though would be to add them up by their components. So you resolve A into its X and Y components, you resolve B into its X and Y components, add all the X's, add all the Y's, and then you can convert it back into polar, into vector form where you've got a magnitude and a direction by using your typical method, uh, Pythagorean theorem and inverse tangent to get the angle. That's about all for this. We also have some sort of forms of multiplication that we'll get to later on this year. Uh, when we look at things from more of a calculus perspective. Cool. The last thing I wanted to notate uh, to talk about is unit vectors and IJK notation. So we typically say that vectors have a magnitude and a direction. Unit vectors kind of only have a direction. I mean, they do have a magnitude, but that magnitude is exactly equal to one. So if you multiply a scalar by a unit vector, it keeps the same magnitude but now it points in the direction of this unit vector. So we've got i, j, and k. These correspond to our three spatial dimensions that we use most of the time, x, y, and z. So we've got i, j, and k would be coming at you out the board. Um, those are our sort of typical notations in that case. So let's say we've got two vectors here. Um, and we wanted to maybe add these together. What you do is you add together the components, just like you would add together. Oh, and I forgot these are these are little hats, not little dots on top of these eyes. Um, you add these together, you would get positive one i hat, uh, positive four j hat, and positive three k hat in this in this situation. You don't have to say the hat uh, when you're doing it with these vectors. Um, I will also often use, instead of i, j, and k, 
X hat, Y hat, Z hat, because these, uh, then you don't have to remember which ones correspond with what. It also lets you do the same within Cartesian coordinates. You can have an R hat and a theta hat, uh, or is in your, in your, uh, it also lets you do the same thing in your polar coordinates. So you can have an R hat and a theta hat, and that's sometimes useful. I think that's mainly all we've got to say about vectors. So there's some practice problems for you to do. Shouldn't take too, too long. Uh, just make sure that you know how to do your Sokotoa. Good luck.